In this third abandoned house workflow, we are going to add detail. This detail is going to be done through additional BSP brushes, 3D models, such as a prop static and some prop physics, and decals. So let's go ahead, jump right in and begin. So here I have the textured version of the map open, and I resave this as a new version and name it detailing. And the first thing that I work on is the stairs. I did not like how the stairs looked as we had them before, just a set of concrete stairs. And I decide to make them wooden stairs and rebuild them completely brush by brush. This particular set of stairs is more complex and contains a lot more detail than the three or four basic PSP brushes we had before. There is a stairs texture that I use and the alignment of this texture takes a little bit of time to get right. But once I complete this set of stairs, I can duplicate it to the rest of the house, to the side and to the back. Now the specific way that I'm using to construct these stairs, I learned from CS Militia. So if you decompile CS Militia map, there is a set of stairs that are very similar to this in the back of the house at T spawn. So I took a look at how Valve did it and then I'm using those stairs as a reference to recreate them in this environment. And I do end up with a very nice set of stairs. And the longest part of this creation is the alignment of the textures. And I do recommend that you study from the official Valve maps as much as you can, whether it's in game or you decompile one of the official maps. So you can open it inside the editor and study it, how Valve did it. So you can recreate it for your own environment. And I do have a video tutorial on how to decompile maps so you can learn from them. Once I'm done with these stairs, I select all the BSP brushes and I press Ctrl T and turn these set of stairs to function detail. So they're not calculated as BSP brushes. Again, as I've mentioned in the very first workflow video, anytime you have a lot of BSP brushes that are used for detail, you want to go ahead and turn them into a function detail and not leave them as BSP brushes. So once I'm done constructing and texturing one set of stairs and I did all the detailing for it, I go ahead and duplicate that set of stairs to the rest of the house, to the side door and the back door. And it's very important that I am happy with the construction of the stairs before I duplicate it so I don't have to fix any issues or any texture misalignment. I then move on to begin detailing the porch. For the porch, I add additional BSP border detail. So originally I had a flat BSP brush with a wooden texture applied. And when you get to the corner or the edge of this porch, the texture stops abruptly and there is no natural transition that you would usually see and it doesn't look good. So what I do is I reconstruct this area and I add about 8 or 16 unit thick border with a similar wooden texture. And then I rotate that texture to create a long border, which looks a lot better. I add this porch border, this detail to every section of the porch. So it does require me to modify the original BSP brush to create that space. So I can then duplicate and move the borders. This geometry border detail also helps to break up the repetition of the texture. So no one single texture continues to repeat on for too long, which usually is very noticeable on large surfaces. The way that I approached working on detail is I outlined different sections of the environment that need detail. So in this case, it was stairs, porch, overhang, roof, then adding props and decals. Once I had that outline written, then I started working on one section at a time. And first there was the stairs, which we already did. I then focused on the porch, which is what I am working on now. Once I'm done with the porch, I move on to the next section to focus on. So I attack one section at a time until it's done. Then I move on to detail another section. 
A very important principle to consider when it comes to detailing is you only want to add detail to areas where the player is going to be. So I'm spending a lot more time on the porch, on the stairs, and underneath the overhang, which you will see later with the props. And I'm not going to be spending too much time on the roof or anywhere where a player will never be in or never gets up close to see it. So it's very important for you to know which areas are playable and if the player is going to be up close in those areas to see your detail and avoid adding any detail or spending too much time in non-playable areas. Here I am continuing to add porch detail for the side door and then I will finish this up and add porch detail for the back door. Now since these porch areas are in different size, I can't just duplicate them and move them. I have to manually work through them one by one. And these type of little details that I'm doing here really matter in the end. They may take you a little while to implement since you have to modify and retexture certain geometry, but it does make a big difference in the end. It's also very important that you don't start adding these details too soon such as in the early BSP blocking stage. And there is a reason we didn't do any detailing in the very first video, with the exception of the windows, which could have been done here in this part. You have to get the structure and the layout and the scale just right before you add any detail. You want to focus on major shapes first. And once you have those major shapes correct, then detailing becomes easier to implement. I have now moved on to the overhang and I am adding an additional border to the outer edge and it's a very small BSP brush that extends around the entire overhang. So I need to position it, duplicate this brush for all of the parts and retexture it. As you detail certain sections it's very easy to get carried away and detail too much and spend way too much time than you need to. So you always want to be asking yourself Am I detailing in the areas where the player is going to be and see that detail up close? And if not, you don't want to spend too much time in those areas and spend more time in areas where the player is going to be and see that detail. So this is the principle I already mentioned earlier in the video and it's very important to keep it in mind as you detail different sections of the map. So I fix a few issues with texture misalignment on the roof and move on to add geometry detail to the overhang roof where there is a change in geometry that introduces a texture seam. And I already started doing this back in a texture video, but if you remember, I stopped because I was spending too much time on detailing where I should have been texturing. So now in this video, I come back to it to fix that area. So I introduce a new BSP brush make it very thin, about two units, and place it in corners where there is a new BSP brush and a texture shift. And by having that BSP brush in those corners, it looks much better. So I'm applying a very similar principle that I did for the porch, where if there is a sudden shift of texture from one BSP brush to another, that usually happens in the corners that you have a very hard time aligning. By introducing a border, with a new BSP brush and texturing that border with another texture, you're able to add additional detail that usually helps to fix or hide bad texture misalignment between geometry. I now move on to the roof and I don't spend too much time on the roof due to the player is never going to be up there and I don't need to add too much detail. I do insert a chimney through a prop static that's available in CSGO version of Hammer Source. With the first four sections now detailed, the stairs, porch, overhang, and roof, I move on to the last two, which are props and then decals. When I place the first prop, and I know it's going to be part of the same section or the same type of prop, such as detailing prop, I assign that prop to its own vis group. So if I duplicate that prop, it will be kept and maintained to the same vis group. And this helps to save time. Instead of trying to place all of these props 
into a this group later on by selecting them individually. And this groups allow you to display visibility of objects in the scene. And they can include BSP brushes and props. And I do have a very in-depth tutorial showing you how to assign and use visibility groups in Hammer Source. And I use this groups all the time. And they're very important to keep your entire map organized. In order to know which props to place in the type of environment you are creating, there are three ways that I use. First, I pay close attention to your photo reference and see what type of props are used in the images. Then using the model browser, I filter for the prop and see if it's available for me to use. The second way is in my mind, I already know which type of props should be placed in this type of environment. And then in the model browser, I search for those props. And these props may not be in the reference, but I know they would fit nicely into this type of environment. And third way is I open up model browser and I'll look through all available props in the editor that I could use. And when I find one, I write down the name and then I keep looking. I don't insert it yet. I just make a list of everything I could use. And then once I have a list, then I begin to insert the ones that I think would fit into the environment. This third option allows me to see everything that's available for me to use in the editor. And it also gives me ideas of props I may want to use that are not in the reference. For this abandoned house environment, I am only using props that are available to me. that have been provided with the editor with Counter-Strike Global Offensive version of Hammer Source. And if you have a prop in mind, but you don't see it available, you may have to create your own custom prop. You would have to model, texture, and import that prop into Hammer Source for you to use. And that requires its own techniques, methods, workflow, and software, which gets very complex. And unless you need something very specific, I would recommend that you find something similar that's already been created for you and use that like I'm doing here in this environment. This will save you a lot more time than attempting to create your own custom props. So using these three methods, I am placing props all around the house, on the porch, underneath the overhang near the side door, and in the back of the house. I have my grid setting all the way down to one to make sure that I align and place these props on the ground floor. Prop placement is very important. When you position and place your props around the environment, you want to tell a story with them. You want to answer two questions. What is that prop doing in that part of the map? And how was it used by someone who lives in that environment? Each prop has to have a purpose for existing and it should not be randomly placed. Every prop in the real world was placed by a person. And that person had a reason for putting that prop there. So when you are placing props in the level editor, you want to think as the type of person who lives in that type of environment and why would they place that prop there. And with that, you'll be able to create better detail and tell a story through prop placement. After I've placed all the props that I think I need, I move on to decals. Decal is a texture that gets overlaid and projected. on top of another existing texture. And with a decal, you can add additional detail on top of your environment. So this is great for dirt, leaks, stains, scratches, any type of graffiti or text or signs. And there are a lot of decals available already for you to use. So on the left hand side, I enable overlay tool, go in the texture browser and search for decals. And I apply decals as additional detail and to break up texture repetition. I use stains, leaks, dirt, and trash decals on the porch, on the house walls, and on the roof. After I've added sufficient enough detail, it's time to compile and take a look from inside the game. I am looking for two things. Does added detail looks good? Does it add to the environment? And are there any errors? in prop placement or decal placement that I need to fix. I am already noticing a few props that have disappeared 
This usually means I need to be changed to a prop physics. There are also a few garbage props that cast very bad shadows. But as far as decals go, they look pretty good. Back inside the editor, I'm going to change the props that disappeared from prop static to prop physics. And that will fix invisible props. And for garbage props with bad shadows, I disable shadows in the properties. This option doesn't remove shadows. It only prevents from creating cheap render to texture shadows. Also, during in-game testing, I noticed that I forgot to texture the interior window border. And if you were to look inside, you could see right through the window border geometry. So I went ahead and quickly fixed it, removing the no draw texture. I compiled one more time to see if all the issues have been fixed. So I'm walking around, looking at the props, looking at geometry, at decals, and just taking everything in. For the last part of this video, I update a few prop statics to prop physics, and I also re-update and add a few BSP brushes to already existing function detail. I do this for the overhang, porch, and stairs. In the next part of workflow videos, we're going to expand and focus on displacement or terrain.